Welcome to a new quick and dirty rebuild. This time it's going to be the Pittsburgh Steelers. I have loaded in the rosters uh, that are from the 31st of March 2022. So most of the free trades and uh, trade window changes from the teams are included. Um, all of the big ones, of course. What's not yet included are the draft picks, so these might vary a bit. But nevertheless, um, I found the Steelers to be a very interesting team um, to do one of those quick and dirty rebuilds. Um, what is a quick and dirty rebuild? Basically just a one-off, uh, one one-episode rebuild uh, where, where I yeah, try to lead the team to the Super Bowl uh, win as quickly as possible. Um, with the Seahawks, it took around seven years to do that. Let's see if we can get the Steelers done quicker. So this is the lineup of uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers as it is right now. There's a lot of young players in there, um, a lot of um, high potential players in there. Um, so overall, it's looking pretty good. Uh, the oldest player on on, on this page uh, is what here he's uh, the fullback um, and Mitch Trubisky who's the quarterback number one um, and uh, you know going into the season with a 71 quarterback is probably not going to be the best way to go um, we've got Najee Harris here so there's quite a few things to be done in the depth chart um, we're looking at defense. It's uh, also actually a very good, uh, very good overview. Um, you've got uh, Minka Fitzpatrick over here. You've got T.J. Watt. You've got Miles Jack, Devin Bush, um, Corey Hayward, and uh, Tweet here. So overall, you know, the cornerstones are there. Uh, the cornerbacks are looking good as well. Um, so the only positions we're looking at this where I would see changes needed would be um, you know if I put uh, Highsmith up here then um, I'm looking at a safety that uh, we would need to bring in and definitely a D tackle um, and then uh, of course uh, a center that's a bit more stable um, and uh, although um, you know Okura 4 is young as well I would like to bring in a more a more developed player here just to stabilize the O-line and of course uh, a very good um, quarterback. So looking at the players that need contract uh, negotiations, there are a lot of players in here. I've already gone through those uh, that I really feel like I want to keep. Um, I have re-signed Deontay Johnson. I've not given an offer to Tyson Alualu. I want to replace that D tackle anyways. I have re-signed Devin Bush, Cameron Sutton. I will not be re-signing Chris Wormley. Carl Joseph, I have re-signed Benny Snell. No offer for John Simon. Um, I have re-signed Anthony Miller. No offers for Isaiah Johnson and James Pierre. Same goes for Robert Spillane. Justin Lane, Steven Sims, Chase Sternberger, Jennifer Avery, Zach Gentry, uh, Henry Mondo, Trey Edmonds, uh, Dwayne, Jas uh, Dwayne Haskins Jr., Khalil Davis, Donovan Steiner, Joe Haig, Faces, Nate Gilliam, John Leglu, and Chaz Green. So that's just a bit of house cleaning. What I've done now is I've gone over the team salaries, I've cleared out a bit of cap space um, and gotten rid of uh, players that are just too bad but are still blocking up um, our salary cap. The next uh, step what I will do is I will uh, take a look at the roster again, uh, look at uh, old players with large contracts and look to maybe uh, just yeah ship them off uh, and bring in younger players uh, that, are, that are capable replacements, maybe even a bit cheaper. First deal of this rebuild is done. We are sending Hayward, our right edge, and our wide receiver, Olszewski, to the Colts. We are receiving Ngakue, also a right edge with a gold star dev. I know that we are losing a superstar X Factor, but we are getting a way younger player, about six years younger, and only one dev trade below. Second deal done, we are receiving uh, fullback 
Alec Ingold from the Dolphins. We are sending our own fullback there as well as a third round pick and a seventh round pick from this year. Again, this is a trade that will free up cap space. Uh, what was on a 9 million year deal only had one uh, year left in his deal. And uh, Alec Ingold is uh, under one mil, so that's a good trade. Looking at uh, the free agency pool from 2021, I've gone for a left tackle Orlando Brown. I see him as a starter over D. Moore Jr. He's 23 years old and uh, 72 overall, so not bad, but he's not at a starting quality. I have given an offer at, uh, to Tyler Bass to try and replace uh, Boswell here, but uh, if you look at the offer, I was seriously lowballing him, so uh, I don't think that I will sign. I've given an offer to James Washington. As a wide receiver, I see him as a backup. Um, I just need a bit more depth at that position. I've given an offer to Quan Alexander for right outside linebacker. Uh, he is behind Highsmith in the ranking, in the depth chart. Um, I, I didn't give him all that he wanted, so uh, <laughs> let's see. Um, I gave an offer to Ethan Pochic uh, for the center position. We are in the lead here, as you can see, we need a strong center here. He's a 76, so basically the same as green, but he's a star dev, so he might improve quicker and is a scheme fit. Further on, left edge, uh, Rashim Green, 25, 75 overall. Uh, of course, an improvement in comparison to Louder Milk. Doug Costin at D tackle, he's 24, 75 overall, and a star dev. I really like uh, what he looks like and he will be a great improvement to the D-tackle position, especially with the uh, star dev. Left outside linebacker, Sione Takataki. Uh, of course, a backup for TJ Watt, who's uh, 27 years old, 99 overall. But I just like to have a bit more depth and in case of injury, you know, not to have to fill the position with other positions. Right tackle is Greg Little, 24 years old, 73 overall. He is thought to be a backup for Okaro 4. Uh, but uh, yeah, again, low balling here. Tight end Anthony Ferkser, he's a backup for Fryermuth. Will Harris uh, is a free safety at 72 26, backup for Minka Fitzpatrick. Joe Dahl is a backup at right guard. Gino Stone is a backup at strong safety. And Drew Forbes is a backup at left guard. So it's free agency day two. Most of the offers have been accepted. Uh, we got a D tackle, a left tackle, a strong safety, a tight end, a left edge, and the center. Those were crucial positions uh, from my point of view. Day two of the free agency, I had to react to being outbidded at a few, uh, a few offers. So I switched to Rodrigo Blankenship uh, for the kicker bid. Um, I switched to Richard Higgins, he's 27, 76 overall, good backup. Uh, right outside linebacker, Taco Charlton, free safety, Will Harris, we're still in the race here. Uh, Markel Lee at left outside linebacker. Right tackle will be Kyle Long, he's a huge band-aid, uh, but a low ball one at that. Uh, right guard, Andrew Wiley, also more or less a band-aid. And a left guard. All right, it's day three. We have an accepted offer for a left guard, a kicker, and a free safety. Day three, tough bidding. I have switched to Richard Higgins, Kai Long, Andrew Wiley, Darren Lee, and Tyrell Dodson are now the offers. We've saved a bit on cap space as these are cheaper options. All five have signed right tackle, right guard, wide receiver, left outside linebacker, and right outside linebacker. Okay, we have traded our first round, second round, and uh, fourth round pick of next year to the Lions, the Detroit Lions, and we will be receiving a round one pick 16. 2022 draft recap. First round picks were Matt Corral at quarterback from Ole Miss and Randy Chancellor, a strong safety from FIU. Uh, second round pick was Broderick Evans, a right tackle from Missouri 
and seventh round pick was Eddie Battle, a cornerback from Florida. Trade done, we are trading our kicker Boswell off to the Bears. We are receiving a seventh round pick. This is simply a trade to clear up cap space again. We were over the salary cap. This is the squad as it's looking heading into the new season. We have a quarterback with a hidden depth trait talent behind an offensive line that is competitive to put it that way. We do have a weak spot at right tackle. We will have to address that further down the line. Uh, we have a pretty big um, wide receiver core. Uh, we've got an improved fullback. We've got a very good halfback and a tight end in Friermuth. And on the defensive side, you can see that we've got a very strong defensive line up here. Uh, the weak position obviously is a second safety um, with the draft pick down here. And uh, yeah, a stone up there. I will be dragging the draft pick up uh, just because he's a scheme fit and he might improve quicker. Uh, apart from that, we've got a Wallace down here on CB2, Witherspoon on CB1. Um, I like our right edge um, and our D tackle uh, left edge could be seen as a weak spot as well. So down the line we will have to do something about strong safety and left edge on defense as well. Mid-season 2022, Pittsburgh Steelers are number one in the AFC North uh, at 6-1. and one. Next game will be against the Baltimore Ravens. Maybe we can uh, get a few trades done before that. Let's see. Mid-season deal has been uh, fulfilled. We are receiving strong safety Ronnie Harrison Jr. from the Bears. We are sending Norwood a third and fifth round pick of the 2023 draft their way. End of the 2022 season, the Pittsburgh Steelers are on top of the AFC North with a 15-2 result. Quick look at the season, started out strong and stayed strong. Uh, there were three, four, five, six consecutive wins, then a loss against the Bengals, very close, just a field goal in it, then a win against the Ravens by a week and then a few more wins and again one loss against the Browns this one pretty clear but apart from that a very very strong showing would not have expected that but I'm happy with it uh, we are past the wild card round and we will head straight to the divisional playoff uh, so this is what the offensive looks like uh, Matt Crowell is up to an 85 the G Harris 98 Deontay Johnson 93 Everybody's going up in their ratings. That's great. Um, Pocic is at an 81. He is uh, definitely providing cover and safety for Matt Corral here, who has surprised me, to be honest. Looking at the defense, we've got uh, TJ Watt uh, is healthy again. That's great. Uh, Minka Fitzpatrick and uh, Yannick Ngakue are up to superstar dev. That's great as well. Apart from that, everybody seems to be doing their job, so we are good to start the divisional playoff. Start of the game, Pittsburgh straight away scoring 7-0, Denver catching up at 7-7 in the second quarter, Denver going ahead 14-14. It's the third quarter now, 21-14 uh, for the Steelers, 24-14, 10 point difference. Now we're heading into the fourth quarter, 31-21. And this is looking like a clear win for the Pittsburgh Steelers. We are at the AFC Conference Championship. The Pittsburgh Steelers have won against the Broncos 34-21. They will now be playing the Kansas City Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes. When you look at the overalls, you can see that the Kansas City Chiefs are clearly ahead on the offense. That uh, the Steelers are a bit better on the defense. And looking at it overall, it should be an even game, but uh, we will have to wait and see how that turns out. Um, it looks like it will be a snow game, so we will be picking our uh, Color Rush jerseys. Teams are coming out now. Time for the NFC Conference Championship. 
So here we are. Pittsburgh Steelers straight away on the board, 14 and nothing. Kansas City picking it up, 14-10, uh, 14-13 in the second quarter, 21-13. The score for the Pittsburgh Steelers, 28-14, 28-16, going back and forth, 35-16. This is a clear-cut game. I will be jumping in, and I'm too late. <laughs> I wanted to jump in, take a field goal just for the heck of it, but nothing doing. Uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers have won the game and we're through to the Super Bowl. Super Bowl Sunday is here. The Pittsburgh Steelers are going to play against the Dallas Cowboys. Should be a very even game. Before we jump into the game, let's take a look at our roster. Any changes that we might have had. Uh, I have upgraded the players uh, throughout the season. And we can see Matt Corral is up to superstar dev in his first season playing for the Pittsburgh Steelers with the number four. That is actually pretty fantastic, absolutely unexpected. Um, he's the number 13 ranked quarterback in the league. He's got a 94 throw power, deep accuracy, medium accuracy is very good at 97, short accuracy 88. Awareness is 85, throw on the run 79, play action 80. So he's not a mobile quarterback um, when compared to uh, mobile quarterbacks like uh, Malik Willis. Under pressure, throwing 91, break sack 82, secondary attributes. He's got good acceleration, he's uh, pretty injury stable, he's got good stamina, good toughness. So looking good here, I just want to take a look at the stats before we head in. This is his rookie season after all. Uh, he has thrown for 5,190 yards, that's 57 touchdowns, uh, only 8 interceptions, uh, 25 sacks, and he's got a rating of 126.1. Wow, what a great uh, rookie season is all I can say. Um, let's see if he can uh, cement his name in history and win a Super Bowl ring and his first try in his rookie season. I have to admit I got sidetracked a little bit when seeing that Matt Corral has gone up to a superstar. That is absolutely massive. Um, I didn't look at defense straight away and uh, almost didn't see that Miles Jack also went up to a superstar. He's now also a superstar dev. So we've got three superstars and one X-Factor on our defense. Um, everything else still pretty stable. Players are improving overall. It's a special occasion, which is why we're bringing out the color rush and we'll be playing in all black. Let's take a peek into the Dallas Cowboys for a second. Uh, unsurprisingly, they've got Dak Prescott at QB. This is a Super Bowl 2023, mind you so not too far away in the future. Um, at halfback it's Ezekiel Elliott, uh, Tony Pollard, uh, the, the names that we need to be aware of. Uh, fullback is Seaton Carter, Seaton Carter. Wide receiver we've got CeeDee Lamb, Michael Gallup, Odell Beckham Jr. who they snapped up uh, on a free contract. Uh, Simi Fehoko and so on. Um, big names in there, tight end is Dalton Schultz. Left tackle, we've got Tyron Smith and Mike English. Uh, left guard is Conor McGovern. And one of the players with a classic name, that's from the, from the roster file, I'm sorry about that. We've got the center, Tony Dalton and Zach Martin. Right guard is Zach Martin and Nate Whiteman. Well, let me just check back. All right, so Zach Martin is the backup for the center. Um, looking forward, right tackle we've got Terence Steele, left edge we've got Demarcus Lawrence who's covering that, uh, left edge is Drake Jackson, he's a rookie, D tackle is Osa Ori Kizuba, what a name, uh, left outside linebacker is Keanu Neal, mid linebacker Jabril Cox, right outside linebacker is Micah Parsons, a 99 rated right outside linebacker. Cornerbacks is Trayvon Diggs, Jordan Lewis, Kelvin Joseph, and Michael Davis. And uh, free safety is Malik Hooker. Uh, strong safety, J. Ron Kiersey. Uh, kicker, Cairo Santos. And punter is Brian Anger. Super Bowl is underway. Pittsburgh 7, Dallas 3. Uh, it's a quarterback in between 10-10, Dallas draw. 
Pittsburgh 13, Dallas go ahead 17, 13, 20 and 17, 27, 17, third quarter 27, 29, 20, 32, 20. We are in the final quarter. Let's jump in now um, and see that the Super Bowl goes in our favor. So Najee Harris will be taking this uh, ball straight up the throat. We can let the clock run down a bit, um, but Dallas still has all three timeouts. So down we go. That's maybe one or two yards, nothing fancy here. Dallas need the ball, that's clear. And we're gonna do a mid draw now. Let's try an audible. Uh, Matt Crow looking for Miller here on the left hand side. Let's see if it opens up, it does. And uh, that bullet pass goes astray. I wonder if it was touched maybe by someone running past him. It's third and 10. Let's do a quick slant again. I really like those. This time it's Claypool or Johnson. Claypool can hang on to the ball, that is great. Now a timeout by Dallas. But we're heading down the field now. First and 10 at the 31 yard line. Let's go with Najee Harris, a run again. Najee grabs the ball, tries to go straight ahead and gets uh, tackled pretty much straight away. Again, only a few yards gained here. Let's do a halfback dive. Straight run again. Dallas is preparing, but no timeouts left now. That should be a second and four. Ah, it's a third and three. That's good. All right. Let's do a final halfback dive. We should get the first down now. And yeah, we got the first down. Moving the sticks. We are at the 20-yard line now. I could just take a knee. I just don't like taking those unless it really, really is a very, very close game. Let's go with a PA cross deep. Looking at Johnson here. A pass on the run. I decided to go with a Fryermuth instead. The tight end was absolutely freeing up. Matt Corral throwing a good pass there. Inside zone, second and three. Three seconds left. Let's do a timeout right now. Why you may ask, well, this is a quick and dirty rebuild. And of course, uh, we're going for a quick and dirty field goal at the end of the Super Bowl. They go slightly inaccurate, but still between the sticks. And we finish Super Bowl with a field goal and a 41-27 win for Coach D. Red. In his first season, taking care of the Pittsburgh Steelers in a quick and dirty rebuild. Look at the stats. Matt Corral with a 99.3 rating here. A bit better than Dak Prescott. Uh, Matt Crowell completed 32 pass attempts, uh, 32 passes, 45 attempts, 370 yards gained, completion rate of 71, three touchdowns, very nice rushing. G. Harris, 13, uh, 18 attempts and 81 yards, An average 4.5. Great job here receiving Pat Frymuth, actually the top receiver, uh, followed by Anthony Miller. And Chase Claypool, only then C.D. Lamb and Dalton Schultz. Deontay Johnson, our superstar, is actually pretty far down. Blocking, pretty even affair, as you can see, <laughs> a lot of zeros. Defense was led by Trevon Diggs, then Cameron Sutton, Donovan Wilson, Miles Jack. Kicking and punting. Kick return, punt return. 
So here we are after Super Bowl 57. The Pittsburgh Steelers have won 41 to 27. I have to say this is really a surprise for me. I was expecting rather a longer uh, rebuild. The Seahawks rebuild took seven years to reach the Super Bowl and win the Super Bowl. And it was only two times in the playoffs. Um, this time around, I did play the playoff games myself, um, or, or at least I jumped in. Um, I did have a, a lot of fun with this rebuild, although it worked out way quicker than I expected it to. This is the offensive line of the Super Bowl champion Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, it's, it's pretty much uh, all of the trades that we did at the beginning. Um, the O-line is stable um, enough and uh, really uh, Matt Corral has surprised me immensely. Uh, truth be told, I was going for uh, Kenny Pickett. However, uh, he was gone by the time I was able to draft. Um, and in his uh, rookie season, that's 5,190 yards, 57 touchdowns, only 8 interceptions. That's, uh, that's a really great percentage there. Um, I'm, I'm actually really amazed. Looking at the defense, uh, we have uh, uh, three gold superstars in here. Uh, we've got um, star devs in Highsmith, Bush, Harrison Jr. and Costin. These are some of the traits that we did at the beginning of the season as well. Uh, TJ Watt in there, of course, helping us along the way. So this is the end of uh, this quick and dirty uh, Pittsburgh Steelers rebuild. A bit quicker um, than the last one, uh, a bit uh, shorter as well. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it nevertheless. Uh, I know I did. I will be doing those um, every time something happens in the trade market or I simply have an idea of what I could do. Um, in this case it was the Pittsburgh Steelers after uh, the retirement of Ben Roethlisberger. Um, and uh, them needing a new franchise quarterback. Um, I had a lot of fun doing this. I hope you did as well. Uh, in case you did, please leave a like and subscribe. That always helps the channel. Um, yeah, and uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.